Um, and uh, just acknowledge what we're here to do. We're here to talk about the value of entrepreneurialism in challenging times. And I am joined today by Dr. or sorry, he's doing his doctor doctorate work, work right now, Ross Porter, who is the professor and program head in the Bachelor of Commerce program. Welcome, Ross. Hello, everyone. Afternoon. And we are also joined by Rita. I'm going to, I really hope that I get your last name right. Agizi? Is that right? Agizi. Rita, do you want to pop on? Agizi. Okay. So we're also joined by Rita as well. She'll pop on in just a minute here. Um, but, oh yes, and we also have Tracy Summers, not to forget you, Tracy. She's going to be in the chat box. If you have questions about any program information or anything like that, she will be piping in on the chat box. Um, so now that you know who we are, we'd love to get a sense of who's in the room with us. So if you want to just type in maybe where you're watching in from and why you're interested in entrepreneurialism and why now, um, we'll be keeping an eye on the chat box and Ross and Rita will be, uh, be keeping an eye what you, what you contribute today. Um, and while you type away, I'll let you know what we're going to be up to. So we're going to start by setting the context where we're at now. Um, they have some great information to share with you regarding looking at past occurrences and also in terms of entrepreneurialism and what it means, why it matters and what it could mean for you. And we also encourage questions and comments throughout. There is going to be a question period, but um, do ask them as, as they come up. Uh, we will be keeping an eye out for them. And, and one more thing, I recognize that I didn't give a little bit of an introduction for Royal Roads because I imagine there's some people who aren't familiar with Royal Roads. So just to let you know who we are, we are an institution that's been around for uh, just over 25 years now. We were created with a government mandate to create programs for working professionals. So it's really about getting people skills that can actually make impact and change in their career and in their lives. So just to give you um, a sense of who we are if you're not already familiar. And uh, with that, I'm going to see who's, who's in the room with us today. So I see Sherry is asking if there will be a recording available. Yes, there will be a recording available. We have Tanya here who's an alumni from the BCom. She's cur currently in the Masters of Global Leadership program. Um, okay, somebody's asking if the other speakers can mute their mics. Okay, no problem. Jamie applying for the BCom program, great. The sound has gone terrible. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and then Julianne from Brazil, very interested in learning more about entrepreneurialism. Okay, I'm going to let it keep going and I'm going to pop off. And that way, hopefully the audio and video will be. Yeah, we'll just see how it goes. And the, and as Alana said, we have a copy of the recording. You'll have a, uh, access to the recording afterwards as well. So uh, again, welcome everyone. Uh, great to have you joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, as Alana said, I'm Ross Porter. I'm the uh, program head of the BCom and Entrepreneurial Management here at Royal Roads, and I'm a core faculty member in the School of Business. And the genesis of this series uh, on managing uncertainty is obviously in response to COVID and its unprecedented impact on us as individuals and teams and organizations. You know, one thing I think is certain, and that is that this is one of the most uncertain times that any of us have experienced in our lifetimes and arguably over the last 100 years. So with that, we asked ourselves, you know, what could we share that could be of value to people um, at this time? Uh, and because we feel that there are various components that we touch on in the BCom program uh, that would be, uh, that could speak to issues that more and more of us need to come to terms with. So this series will be leveraging insights from various BCom faculty who teach on topics that we believe have a direct linkage to what we all need to be thinking more about these days. So this first webinar uh, focuses on the value of entrepreneurial thinking, being and doing. And I'm joined today by Rita Aguizzi, uh, who is my kind of go-to entrepreneurship um, faculty member within, within the BCom um, blended program. And so welcome, Rita. Thank you for, very much for joining us this afternoon and, and sharing uh, your insights and, and wisdom. And I'll be building on comments that Rita is making throughout uh, today's, um, today's webinar. Um, I mean, the broader context is that we believe it's absolutely imperative for people and organizations at this point in time to be really reimagining, reexamining what they do, why they do it and how they do it. And in many respects, that's the essence of entrepreneurial practice and will be 
unpacking more of that over the next uh, 55 minutes or so. So again, thanks everyone for, for joining us. Uh, we look forward to having a, um, an interactive opportunity to dialogue on what we think are really important um, considerations that all of us need to be factoring in in terms of our own work and, and the work uh, that we contribute to in the world. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks, Ron. So, yeah. We ready to go? Yeah, let's yeah. get going. Let's move on to our right. first piece. <laughs> okay. Let's set the context. All right. So thanks everyone for being here. It's so wonderful. I've been watching the chats and why some of you are here for various reasons. It's wonderful to see an alum, a couple of alums in there, um, both from the BCom program and others. So welcome. I was also intrigued to see some people pointing some things out there on um, that, that you're already working within some large companies and you're hoping this will be of value to you. So absolutely, thank you for that. So I guess to set the context, um, you know, we've always heard, I think, that the future was going to be disrupted. I think we've always heard that. Um, I think what where we are is that it has been disrupted quite suddenly, maybe unexpectedly, but in a way that none of us were really, I think the shock and the immediacy of it, it is what's brought us all to the point we're at here today. So when I look at, and we're sitting here today in this ridiculously cliche statement that an unprecedented global economic lockdown has occurred, I mean, gosh, who would have ever thought of that? And, and I think what, it's, what it means, what it means for all of you and maybe why you're here is that it's a restart and it's a restart for all of us. That's the point is that we need to restart ourselves. We need to restart our economies, our companies, our families, our children. It's this restarting is almost ironically exactly what we do when we start a company, right? So, so that's why that connection between entrepreneurial thinking, if we can do it to start an idea, there's a lot of value in some of the messages we're going to share with you today that will help you restart yourself. So we can see it as this extinction level event that, you know, everything is going to become extinct because this has happened and we really have to start over again. Um, but also there's an incredible upside, right? Human beings are very resilient to begin with. Um, and we know from history that adversity does spring innovation. So it's interesting to me when I was looking at this and trying to find my own motivation that 50%, I found this really interesting, 50% of the Fortune 500 companies that actually showed up in 2009 actually began after the 2008 economic downturn. And that was a real downturn. That was a downturn that was uh, created by problems in companies. The downturn we're in now is because governments have just turned the timeline off for a little bit. It's not because a lot of those companies were experiencing problems. Some were, some weren't, but it's a different type of economic lockdown. So if, we, if that happened in 2008, the potential of what we can do when we flip that switch back on is immense. And then another really interesting point that, you know, be interesting um, to hear some of Ross's concepts on this is that even back in 1665, when the great plague of London, the big one, the one that this one is being compared to, sent everybody home, they were in lockdown, right? That's when amazing things actually happened. I was surprised to learn that Isaac Newton invented calculus and optic theory and laws and, you know, just a quick example of what happens when people are forced to be inside their heads and think a little bit. So, so that's the context that I'd like to lay out, Ross. Created Ooh, because sorry, of I'm bad gonna... business practices yes. um, catching up to all of us. Whereas this is an outside force that yes, some people were saying this could eventually happen, but none of us were operating on a daily basis. No firm, no individual is operating on the daily basis saying that tomorrow could be upside down. And that's exactly what we experienced. So it is really unprecedented in terms of having this outside effect 
fundamentally reshape how we need to live and work, not only for this period of time, but arguably it's going to have a lasting effect. As you said, some things will be forever changed. How they will be changed, we have potentially a role in influencing. Some will be set upon us and we need to figure out how to effectively respond. Both situations, you and I believe, entrepreneurial thinking and practice can be of significant value. And that's what we're here today to talk about. Yeah, exactly. So, so, and more than even just us chatting, I mean, this is our uh, invitation to you to, to parachute out there. Um, they're socially distanced, I think. I don't know. They're not wearing masks or gloves, but anyway, it's a cool image. Um, and really, really, we've got, you know, about 45 minutes to really get inside your headspace. You're in your private spaces and, and really get inside yourself and be thinking about how this really does apply to you, right? It's an invitation for you, all of you, to begin thinking what we call think like an entrepreneur. If you want to restart, then think the way people who start things think, <laughs> right? That, that's really what it's about. So, um, so that's our invitation to you. I think that this would be a good time. I'd like to get a feel for what people actually think entrepreneurialism is. Yeah, we that's right. Some when you hear the, when you hear the term thoughts. entrepreneur, like oh, think like an entrepreneur. What images or words evoke in your in your mind? And we may just flip some of them. Besides complaining, I know. <laughs> but in a, but in I'm a, just but looking. In a, oh, creative okay. and innovate. Yep. Yeah. Self starter. Self starter. Excellent. Oh, I love the create value. That's my Perfect. Line. <laughs> ah, <laughs> look at these smart people. Oh, interesting, Joel. Leadership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And new value. That's interesting. Yes. For thought, the startup. Yeah. Resilience, wonderful. Oh, this is great. Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Yes. Sure. Who was that? Yep. Sharon. We'll be talking yeah. about that. Yes. Yes. Because depending yeah. on how we yeah. respond to oh, a question well, like this or a statement like this and the extent to which we see ourselves there in it or not will affect what we do or don't do. So if you create barriers mm -hmm. based on yeah. self-talk that you need to be a certain person to be to do certain things uh, that could be very enabling or it could be very hindering, depending on the language that you come up with or imagery you come up with. If you think this is the reserve for a, a special class of people, then obviously you're going to be more passive than active when it comes to um, being entrepreneurially um, oriented. But Rita and I are here to maybe reshape how you imagine um, where you sit relative to thinking like an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so the way that, that, you know, today's thinking, it used to be just a startup. I mean, it's, it's interesting because commerce, a bachelor of commerce, you know, commercio, um, that's, it's an Italian sort of the banchieri and it used to be about merchants and starting businesses ages ago, historically. Interesting, most people don't realize that the discipline that you actually couldn't get a degree, it wasn't even considered a discipline or something to study um, until the uh, 1960s, actually. It's a very new discipline in terms of what it means. But for many, many years, it was all about uh, startup and venture. And then we came to learn that there is, a, so these are the principles. I think I'll just move to the slide that this term of entrepreneurialism really involves a, a four key pillars. And some of you have um, hit on some of those. First of all, it's a mindset. It is not the type of person you are. It's not what you can or can't do, what you, you know, everybody can do this. Um, there's a lot of literature around are people born entrepreneurs or can you make people entrepreneurs? You can't make anybody do anything. It's a mindset that can be cultured and developed if you think that it's a value to you. That's important. 
Um, so, so there are theories. We, you know, there are lots of theories. This is a university, and we often go over the theories. There is scientific evidence-based theory, and a theory is just something that's been proven over time and space across many sectors and genders and cultures, and it, it's a way of doing things. Gravity is a theory. We know it works, right? So there are entrepreneurial theories out there, um, which really speak to the belief in what the process is. So there is also a process. So anybody can start a business if you want to talk about that. Anybody can get married. Anybody can have a baby. But there are proven things that, that help people succeed in life and succeed in, in marriage, succeed in relationships, succeed in parenting, because there are set and tried processes. So it is a process. We know that there is a process that increases the chances of success and helps you develop the mindset that you need. And then absolutely, it is about tackling uncertainty and amb ambiguity. And I think that's where some people start to feel uncomfortable, um, which is something maybe, Ross, you might want to comment on. That's the biggest thing is that we somehow feel we're unworthy that we're, no, we're not comfortable with risk. We're not comfortable with um, uncertainty and ambiguity. I think that pillar is the one that most people bump up. Yeah, I think, I think often, uh, whether it's learners or just us as individuals, we're all desiring a playbook, uh, a script, a map that we can follow that will lead to success. And as Rita alluded, there are certain principles that underlie processes that uh, you can learn about and apply. But at the end of the day, there is no one for one relationship. If I do this, I have a guaranteed result. So we believe that part of the entrepreneur orientation is increasing one's capacity and capability to navigate or manage through an uncertainty and ambiguity. It'll never be fully comfortable, but we can make you more comfortable in, ter in terms of tackling uncertainty and ambiguity. Uh, that if it, I mean, there's no shortage of people out there that want to believe that they've they've found the silver bullet. You just go into a uh, a book a bookstore at an airport, maybe not right now, but <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago, and hopefully uh, not too far in the in the future. And there's lots of people selling, say, we have it figured out. Here's the five steps to this, that, and that. And I think the reason that those sell so well is that there's a there's a part of us that wants that level of certainty that if I do this, I will get a certain result. But what we want to invite you to say, you know what, if there is any time in our lifetime that we have to face, we have no, really, we have no recourse other than to face uncertainty. And then the question is, how are we going to face uncertainty? Do you believe that you have the capacity and capability to navigate the level of uncertainty that we're all experiencing right now to be able to craft future, mm -hmm. yeah. shape the present and to craft the future? We believe that there is an element that that all of us have within us that can be cultivated to in order to do that. And part of that, not exclusively, is around the kind of the entrepreneurial worldview that we're going to continue to unpack. Exactly. And, and so it, it's surprising to people when they approach a university or, you know, an academic institution like this, wanting yes. the playbook that we step them back and go, hmm, you can't have the playbook yet, yeah. right? We need to we need to unbundle you a little bit more. Teach, yeah. Teaching, <laughs> teaching, yeah. teaching so, by so numbers. Think, think about this, if all you've learned is yeah. to do something in a very precise way, in a very particular circumstance, and then you're faced with a situation that is unfamiliar, is not related to the circumstances that you were exposed yeah. to, how do you respond? And of all you've learned is when faced with X, you do Y, but not when you face Z, what do you do? Then you're not positioned for success moving forward. Right. So, so here's, you know, because people like definitions, here's one definition of entrepreneur, not entrepreneurialism, but the person, the entrepreneur is really a person who, note the language here, that possesses a specific combination of personal attributes. It doesn't say what kind of attributes, okay? You possess a combination of unique personal attributes. You have an attitude, you have a skill set. 
That's every single human being has those three things. An entrepreneur is also someone who perceives an opportunity. Now that is, that is an indication of someone who thinks like an entrepreneur. Um, but that's, that's again, that's, that's a mindset. Right. That's something we can learn to do. What, what you see as an opportunity, um, another person just sees as a challenge. And, it, exactly. and it's easy, yes. it's easy yes. to point out problems and not be somebody who can actually develop solutions. So you're absolutely exactly right. So the perception or the ability to recognize as an opportunity, which can be learned. Um, and then someone who possesses that drive and determination, which again, you all do. We believe that, and we'll go into that a little bit further as to why I believe, and I know Ross does, every single human on this planet actually does have drive and determination. You just have to find the one that's right for you. That, that's the thing. And then we have that what that determination allows us to do is to marshal whatever resources we have, people we know. Um, our own ideas and however strategic method we use. I mean, we all strategize every single day. We strategize, what are we going to have for dinner, right? As silly as that sounds, that's how basic it is, right? And then we go after it. So here is, if you need one, a definition of entrepreneur the way we like to position that. So, yeah, and now I think, you know, again, people say, are there personal, there's certain characteristics? I don't believe so. I think this is, you know, Ross, yeah. you do a great job so, of, of this. Exactly. Imagery. So what I try to help people do is kind of um, confront some of their own um, biased perspectives on what it means to be entrepreneurial or not. And what I find is that people will naturally associate it with venture startups, small business management. And I say it. That is one or two types of ways that you can express your entrepreneurial self, but it is not the exclusive domain of what it means to be entrepreneurial. Uh, as Sharon and others have uh, uh, um, implied, this applies as much to every sphere of life, every sector of the economy, every industry needs people with qualities such as this. And the invitation is to say, which of these qualities, and this is not an exclusive list, an exhaustive list, um, there are many other attributes that we could uh, identify here, but these are just some that, um, that I often speak to uh, about you know, the, one's proclivity to be enterprising or resourceful, to be imaginative or creative. Uh, we talked about drive or be aspirational. I think a key one is about an action orientation. So there's this issue around being active versus passive to be more solution focused than simply focused on problem identification or just seeing seeing challenges and not being able to see past challenges, uh, to be somebody who really is inclined to create value and to make a difference. And ultimately for me, it's about moving from ideas to action to actualization. Now, I would argue that each one of you can see at least one of these attributes being attached to you. And as I said, this is not an exhaustive list of of distinctive qualities that we would associate with entrepreneurialism, but some combination of these or others, as Rita will talk about, becomes what is uniquely you. And then the, the, the call to action is, how are you gonna express that? How are you gonna bring that to the world, your current work, future work, or any other sphere uh, of your life so that you can actually create value in some meaningful way? And the value that you create may be different than the value that somebody else um, seeks to create. But the invitation is to say, what distinctive qualities do you possess or would you see value in cultivating so that you can actually get on with the things that you want to get on with in this world? Mm -hmm. And Mark, your comment is bang on. I mean, you're right. We're, we're facing the headwind, but there's a, there's a little bit more, there's, there's more to it. I mean, we, we so, you know, an invitation from Ross, just quickly in the chat box, where are our enterprising, who are you? Which of these really resonate with some of the folks here? Or none? Maybe this is, is it'd be interesting to see your reaction to some of these. I mean, you had, you know, typed some of those at the beginning. So, so while you're doing that, sorry, that's my little dinger, um, I'd like to, to um, push that a little bit further right? Uh, we are all, every human being on this planet is an entrepreneur. In fact, look at children. They're amazing. 
Okay, every single one of you has an idea. You have ideas every single day. You all have sought solutions to problems. Sometimes they're really simple. Sometimes they're complex. Um, we've all got this in in innate sense of creativity, even though we don't think we, we're creative, we actually are. So what we do and what we, we hope, you know, encourage people to do is take that earth and flip it around a little bit, that perspective, right? As we've mentioned, seeing the opportunity and not the problem. Rob, we need to go back because you need to explain this image. Yeah, okay, sorry. So uh, if it's not uh, clear, so this is somebody who was confronted uh, with having wine, but nothing to serve it in. And so what do they did? They hacked a solution by having a water bottle that they cut in half and turn it upside down and all of a sudden you got a wine goblet this is what we're talking about and the reality is each this of us does something similar to this every day but we don't see it as an entrepreneurial practice or an entrepreneurial action but in essence it is yeah exactly and and and, and that's exactly that's exactly right so Yes, the anthropolo yeah, I never say that word. Anthropological handyman, handy woman, handy person, combining new resources or resources for new purposes, right? Modifying, customizing, hacking. You know, and, and so we can we can do that in our lives, but when it moves into the realm of what we're calling entrepreneurialism, we apply that same principle to products. You know, I saw a comment about sure. Delta, somebody here from Delta wanting to, you know, do product development to processes. We can hack how we do things. We're seeing that out in the world every single day now. I had a birthday song this morning. I was listening, singing to somebody a birthday and I had one of those birthday hats on my head and I suddenly realized it could be a COVID mask, right? <laughs> That's a typical entrepreneur. Oh my God, I was sitting there with my pointy COVID mask, but this is what humans do, right? Business models. This is a big one. People think they have to innovate a product or a service. Actually innovating the business model, the way that the value is delivered has been where most innovation has happened in the last five to seven years. The sharing economy is a perfect concept of that. How do we actually get people sharing stuff? Can you imagine having somebody you don't know pick you up in a car or renting a figure in air mattress in somebody's apartment? I mean, it's the business model delivery is a big, is a big, big uh, innovative driver in the last yeah. five years. And I'm going to say to better suit whatever current need is exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. arguably COVID, whether we like it or not, because I think a lot of us like current state, you know, status quo, not necessarily always, always innovating, improving things. But here's the reality. We have no other option at this point. Those who stay still at this time will be left behind. Every organization, yeah. every team, every individual is being, is being confronted with new reality on a daily basis, and it's constantly changing on us. You can't just stay still. It'll just, anyhow. So I've been seeing a huge yeah. thread of, of, of research and speculative reports being coming across my desk that all talk about COVID-19 has created an absolute imperative and an opportunity for individuals and organizations to reimagine and transform what they do and how they do it. And things such as speed and agility and innovation and customer understanding are all key attributes. And we'll talk about uh, some of those now and we'll be talking about some of those in the subsequent uh, two webinars that we'll be hosting as well. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, it's an imperative. And, and, you have yeah. really, well, you, have, you always have a choice, but the choice that's confronting us now is not, do I do anything different? It's, what do I do different? Oh, perfect segue, because what I wanted to add, how do I do it? But a really important one is why. Why are you doing it? That's critical. That's another piece that takes us from the creativity we use in our homes every day to live and moving it into the realm of entrepreneurialism. So the why is about, you know, the most common whys are because you want to change, change lives, right? That's a good why right? You want to impact, you want to have impact in some way, you want to make a difference in some way, right? In your workplace, in your communities, um, you want to create jobs. That's a good why, right? That's usually a business startup, 
right? Great. Or you want to start a not-for-profit so you can create volunteer opportunities for a community, right? Or you want to start a legacy or you want to save the planet. The why becomes the bigger driver. We can all what we call bricolage. We call it bricolage when you use whatever's around you to, you know, make I an mean, immediate solution to something. You look around and you find the hat and you make it into a COVID mask. That's simple bricolage. But the why and the how are the two things that set it apart from what we do every day in life. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, so yeah, that, that I think is important. So, so here we go. It's a transformative mindset, right? It is about leading. I saw that in, in the chat box earlier on. This is your opportunity in whatever way you choose to do it. You, not your neighbor, right? Not anybody in this forum you okay what are you going to do what can you do and why should you be doing it because the why is what's going to drive you right it's about leading and it's about innovating not going back to the way we were i get questions all the time how can we improve how do we uh, manage business continuity and COVID? and i'm going you don't want continuity <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to move forward, but that's not the continuity that you had before. That's not innovating, right? It's all about the change. So yeah, Ross, the list, here's your list that you were talking about, right. the forward thinking employees and the importance of entrepreneurship. I know this is something you like to talk about. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the reality for people coming to this program, but that's not why everybody's here today, is that but most people, um, aren't self-employed, um, aren't what we would classically define in terms of those people wearing those classic entrepreneurial hats. They find themselves working inside of an organization. And I think the, one of the key things that we want to reinforce today is that this is an invitation, an opportunity for anybody in any position, in any organization to be able to actually exercise and express an entrepreneurial orientation, which I believe is incredibly value adding and is imperative at this point in time. We need people, every employee needs to be much more forward thinking and solution focused and opportunity minded. And to read it, the whole piece around community building and then generating change makers and solution finders. Um, you wanna to speak to the last one around the ethical human centered business? Yeah, yeah. So the ethical human centered business is another one we do. I, 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 it's, it's sort of a little soapbox of mine, but I find that it helps people put this whole entrepreneurialism thing into perspective. Um, the why is important. You know, if, if, if there's bad myths out there, and that's why people are sometimes ashamed or don't want to talk, you know, the B word. Um, I'm out to make a profit. I'm out to get a bunch of money. My purpose for doing this is so I can own a Jaguar one day, you know, or whatever. Um, that's the past. That's the business of old time. I mean, if you if you look at true entrepreneurs today, the money and the wealth possibly could be an outcome. Um, but that's not where we start, right? We start with human centeredness. It's the empathy. We'll be talking and talking about empathy. This is why the COVID situation has impacted us so much, right? It's about thinking and caring about people. It's about businesses that make what, what we call ethical decisions. There's a solid reason behind why that problem has cropped up and why the solution that you're providing is the right one that people want. It's not a solution you push out to people. It's a solution you go out and co-create with the users of what you're trying to do. That's a very different way of looking at, at, at business. This is what we call ethical human centered business. Some people uh, hear the word, the triple bottom line which is fine. I mean, this is people, planet, and profit. But triple bottom line, uh, you see a lot of companies just talking about it. You know, they talk about it, they go get certified and put a stamp on their company that they're, you know, B Corps certified. Um, that's not the same as truly making your mission statement about creating real, real authentic value for people not just the next smell of Tide detergent, which really isn't necessary, right? That kind of thing. So, so that's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about there. 
So, so, so we, we tend to ask, you know, what, what can you actually do? What, what thing, and I'm hoping you're thinking about this and the questions you asked earlier. Um, what I'd like to ask now is if you could think of one thing that you think is the real, real ingredient to all of this, what is it that really makes a successful entrepreneur? Can anybody tell me what they think that is? waiting for the box. Okay, persistence, yeah. Oh yes, being open to ideas, very good grit. grit. Yeah, loving this. Get into it, so that action orientation, okay. yeah, just get out there and do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we're gonna reveal to you the little key, it's a key. Okay, so someone that I'm walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll have it just said. <laughs> Empathy, love it. Yep, failing oh, falling, failing forward. Yes, I used to have a mentor that told me even when you were falling flat on your face, you were still falling forward. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, okay. So here's the big reveal. You wanna see the reveal? You wanna know what it really is? According, yeah, according, drum according roll. to us. <laughs> according to oh. us, yeah. <laughs> what do we know? Yeah. All right, here it is. It's actually you, <laughs> you know, it's you. This is weird, but you go listen to the story of every entrepreneur from Jobs to Branson to Mary Kay to um, great new Netflix on that. Uh, there's a wonderful program on uh, now that's a four part series on Netflix. The first uh, black uh, African woman that started hair products in the United States. Um, it's all about the people not a particular set of characteristics but the but the the kit that is you this is effectuation theory there's theory behind this sarah sarah's vasti is the one who has the theory behind this we can share resources if people want them but this is what it's about as odd as this sounds who are you what are you good at right um who do you know your networks are unique and they're just your own right? What do people know you for? Ask people. That's a great exercise. If you want a cool tip today, go out and ask all your, your networks. Just say, give me one word. Who am I? And see what people, how people perceive you. That's a wonderful way to get to know what, what people know you for, right? What resources do you have? How many people do you know? And I'm not talking about likes on Facebook, right? And, and what do you own? What's that package? This package, this secret sauce is the trick to all of it. It's the trick to all of it. Um, and and, and there, there are things like, like we talk about um, creating partnerships and creating a crazy quilt of people because you can't do entrepreneurship by yourself. So I love Oprah Winfrey has a line that I use all the time in class is that you don't want people who will only get in that limousine with you right you want people that'll get on the bus when the limo breaks down who's going to be there for you that's what we're talking about here and this package what i call the secret sauce is um something that ash moira who's a who's another thought thinker in this area he calls it not this but many things he says instead of looking at what your competitive advantage is which everybody can copy competitive advantage they can. What you have to find is what your unfair advantage is. What can somebody come and say, God, I can't be Rita because Rita's this. That's right. Nobody can do what Rita does. Nobody can do what Ross does. Nobody can do what Alana does or, or, or Prathop or Josh or Sylvie. That's your unfair advantage. And nobody, if nobody can copy it, then that's where how you learn to position that. And that's what begins to give you that confidence that you actually can do whatever it is you want to do, as long as it's not making, forcing yourself to do what you think other people want you to do or what other people are doing that don't fit with you. Ross, you had some good thoughts on that. Well, I was just gonna say that that I think it's very easy for us to externalize things that are, are... Anything that's getting our way is to do to external factors. When in fact, 
as you're saying, it's about coming to terms with what makes you uniquely you and honoring that. And I think somehow we we don't honor who we are. We think the answer is out there. It's in a book, it's in an article, it's in a program. When in fact, what people discover once they start down this down this this journey is that actually it's within them. It's the things that are getting in the way and the things that are enabling. And the clearer you are on some of these things, the more enabling, the more capable you will be in terms of having an orientation of just getting out there and making things happen. And I think to the extent that you think it's out there, you will be passive because you're waiting for something to come to you, to acquire from outside or to use as an excuse for not taking the next step because you're saying, well, this has to be right and this has to be right and this has to be right. And what we're saying is no, who you are and what you're good at and who you know, that's always with you. But if you don't have the insight and understanding of what those things are, and then, then you can't move. That's right. And 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 then 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 no idea is a stupid idea. Everybody has ideas where where you begin to get to train and to get into the professional development part and and to learn and to culture and to master is how can I take that kid and find the fit and the solution in the world that's waiting to be solved, right? That's, that's the, the piece that takes the culturing. Yeah, that's the key. But this, but this is the key. I mean, when I introduce this to, to students, they just, it blows their mind because they never really thought they were waiting for some, yes, it's grit. Yes, it's all those things. But until you put your package of unfair advantage together and then find how that fits to a problem that needs to be solved, man, your chance of success goes up, like I would say 50%, yep. right? And there. that's the difference in my <laughs> yeah. view. That's the difference yeah. between um, you know, there could be fit born of honest insight and understanding versus naked opportunism. And I think too often people associate entrepreneurial practice with naked opportunism. It's simply those who take advantage of any opportunity that moves, they can make some a buck from. That's the S of entrepreneurs. And I think our mm -hmm. what we're suggesting to all of the people today is no, that could be one expression, but we want something that's a little bit more authentic and grounded. And it starts with you honoring who you are based on honest insight and understanding, then matching that with an empathetic orientation to what the world needs or a particular subset of the world and bringing those two pieces together rather than saying anything that moves that I think I can get a hook into, I'm going to pursue and I'm going to make a buck out of it. Okay, fine. If that's the way you want to live, but I think we're trying to draw people into a, a bigger, fuller understanding of what it means to be entrepreneurial. Yeah. And I want to address some of the comments about perfectionism. Um, it's not about perfectionism. It's actually about the gift of imperfection. As Benet Brown says, it's the imperfections that we actually move us forward. And any successful entrepreneur will tell you, I mean, the, 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 the minimum, what we call a minimum, there's all kinds of processes that we can share that just aren't relevant today. But, you know, doing minimum viable testing, failing fast, failing cheap. It's not at all about perfection. If you wait for perfection, it ain't ever going to get out You'll be there. waiting. <laughs> right? <laughs> You'll be waiting. No, right. So so very, very interesting. Very, very and interesting. And Mohammed will be talking about um, the risk-taking piece yes. in the next, I think, the next slide. Yeah. So so let's move on. Yeah. So um yeah. So so what we're trying to shift you and I see it happening as we're talking in the in the box um, is really what we call a paradigm shift, right? This shift of a paradigm when when you really think you have the right map in your head, that's what a paradigm is. A paradigm is in my head, this is the right map, right? Um, there's all kinds of, of psychological frameworks um, around that, but humans do that. They're in, they got a mind map and they can't shift that mind map, right? Um, so the common mind map that a lot of, of, of people use, especially when they're threatened, especially when there's something disruptive, especially when it involves change, humans don't like change. Your body doesn't like change. In fact, neurologically, it will convince you to not change something because that's threatening. That's a neurological fact. Um, so, so this is what we're, we often come to the world with, you know, through our culture training, beating up, peer review. That's what all the likes are about on Facebook, how people look at you, what they think of you. This fixed mindset that failure is a limitation, 
of ability, which it's not, it's an opportunity to actually learn, um, that you're either good at something or you're not, that you, you can't change, that you can either do something or you can't do something, you don't like to be challenged, that's true, that's basic human behavior, we're all like that, um, that your potential is predetermined, uh, when you're frustrated, you just give up, not worth it, right? Um, don't give me feedback, don't criticize me, don't want to hear what you have to say, because my mind has just spent a lot of time convincing myself this is good. Um, you know, I'll just stick to what my, I know I'm safe there, right? That's that risk taking part. That's human nature. That's okay, guys. It's okay. We can stand in that space and recognize that that's what most human brains think like, but you can work yourself through to, to a growth mind statement, right? A growth mindset. You can move to failure is the opportunity to grow. It's not failure. It's, it's an attempt. I mean, look at a child learning to walk. Would you say the child has failed because it falls every time it stands up? I mean, can you imagine learning how to play an instrument or drive a car or do anything if we didn't fail and learn, right? You can learn. You actually can learn to do almost anything, right? Even phys look at people with physical disabilities and what they, they, they work through, right? Um, and challenges do help you grow. If you plant a tree in a greenhouse, the minute you put it outside and the wind hits it, it falls over, <laughs> right? You, you need the challenge to make you stronger, right? And it is effort and attitude that actually determines your ability, nothing else, right? Feedback is not critical if you open yourself up to it and you embrace it, right? Inspiration by the success of others instead of jealousy, so, so this is what we're taught. Entrepreneurialism is your key to making this paradigm shift. And we associate entrepreneurism with the growth mindset. And that's what we speak to. And it's kind of the orientation we try to bring to, to the topic. And it's, again, it's an invitation to say, yes, at any given time, we probably are a combination of fixed and growth. You could do your own bit of self-analysis to say, where are you across any one of these continuums about how you view failure or how you view challenges? And we believe that you can move along the continuum from fixed to growth. And the more you do, the more opportunities that you will see and be feeling confident to pursue. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, Alana, the whole post-traumatic growth is, is this. I mean, it could be called behavioral psychology is what's used there. But once people begin to embrace that no matter what the trauma we all know this. It's the way that you react to that trauma. You could, you know, of war camp prisoners and people that have been through horrific, horrific, unfair, horrible things. Humans are resilient. They, they will find a way not to find the positive because these are horrible things. Nobody's saying be a Pollyanna, but you can go inside and find that strength that says, now what do I do, right? Where do I take this where I can actually make this worth the pain and the effort and everything that happened to me right so so yeah it's it's uh yeah thank you for for sharing some of those resources that's right it is carol dweck's so, work based so, on carol dweck's work yeah yeah, good. yeah. It, yeah. Right. it's good 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 work yeah so so yeah a lot of this is is this foundational pr principle of what we call empathy it's getting into all these different shoes and some of us have started to do that COVID has helped us do that a little bit but we only step into one or two shoes we forget to step into many many shoes every day every minute um empathy is something very few people actually appreciate uh, Brene Brown is the expert in this um, and it's not about sympathy it's not about, yeah, I'm kind of hearing you with one here, but here, have a sandwich. Maybe that'll make you help or, or, but yeah, but right. Or you should be grateful. I mean, gratitude is a good thing to practice, but the grat, the gratefulness about you should be grateful that this is you, you, what you have this and you, this isn't happening to you doesn't make people feel better, right? You, sometimes you just have to get into their shoes and just feel the pain with them and just say, I hear you. And, and again, how does this apply to business? If you're thinking about business, is that empathy about, ah, okay, I thought it was this product you needed, but you're telling me that this is your pain point right here. 
Um, and, and then connecting with that pain point, even if it's not, this is a big mistake that people make, is they try and connect it to their pain point. And then try and convince that person, yeah, but, right? Instead of really listening to your consumer or your community or, you know, whatever your solution is. I mean, you get all gung-ho about your solution and then you start shoving it down people's throat. That's not going to help. So the other part, remember we were talking about the how, the why, and if you don't add the empathy piece and truly embrace what people are telling you they want, that's another place where sometimes we see it go off the rail, right? That's when it doesn't work because you're forcing your solution on other people, which is not what um, authentic ethical entrepreneurship is about. And I think the other piece to, to build on that we want to, get across is that applied empathy is both uh, demonstrating an understanding and insight of self, which we've been talking about, kind of your secret sauce of what makes you you and what what are your drives and motivations, and that outside empathy, understanding the needs, the wants, the aspirations, the cares, the concerns of whatever it is, whatever audience that you are seeking to impact. And it's where those two pieces to come come together is where you have something. So it goes back to that point that I made mention earlier is the connection between who you are as an individual or as an organization, what you stand for, and then what the world needs. Uh, having that empathetic understanding, I was reading something just today that was saying the businesses that actually are managing through this time right now are engaging in what they say is empathetic listening. They really are seeking to understand yes. the current and emerging reality of their stakeholders and to actually adjust their business and how it, how it what they stand for and how they go about um, expressing um, their business uh, in ways that actually meet the current and emerging realities uh, of, of people. And you can only do that when you get out and actually start ask questions and actually listen to people. So again, it's that fit born of honest yeah. insight and understanding versus naked opportunism. Well, and, and it is about understanding needs, but it's more than even understanding. I, I see that comment in the chat box. It's actually, this is hard. It's actually feeling the need. It's getting yourself to feel that person's need, even though it makes no sense to you. And once you begin to feel their pain, which is what COVID is doing, that's when real empathy starts. It's like really, really put yourself in their shoes. So you can ask a question, but then it's more like, well, so what does that feel like? You know, what does it feel like to, you know, feel, feel. People are afraid to talk about emotion. Emotional intelligence and emotion agility has a lot to do with entrepreneurial leadership. And entrepreneurship is often connected, connected to emotional intelligence, right? So, um, okay. yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. So we got five minutes. So we got a, a little yeah. bit more to cover yeah. and then, um, we'll, see. well, this yeah. is really just more a summary Ross. Yeah. Maybe we could just use it as a summary and then, and then open it up to just a few questions. Cause we've talked about all these things. Yeah. And, uh, so there's a theory of effectuation that kind of captures much of what we talked about today. I think it's effectuation.org if you're interested in, in that. We talked about the orientation to opportunity identification and pursuit, not simply problem identification. I see that with learners especially. It's very easy for any of us to actually call out all the problems that we see, the things that we would like change, but are we willing to take that additional step and actually identify the opportunity or the solution that could be um, invoked to address that? Uh, um, Mohammed asked about risk tolerance. And I think the, the other piece that I, gets in the way of people to say, well, I'm not a big risk taker, so I'm obviously not very entrepreneurially oriented. Again, the media will highlight the extreme cases. And these are people that have, uh, that have risked it all and have benefited from it or risked it all and, and lost and saying that that's the primary orientation to, to, to entrepreneurial practice. There's something we learn, you learn in, in our program called the affordable loss. It actually is based on the theory of effectuation. And that is you only risk that which you can afford to lose. So it's a much more managed and right. tolerant risk approach than this idea that I, if I don't swing for the fences, I, I, I might as well not even start. Leadership. Um, we believe that, that entrepreneurial, successful entrepreneurial practice starts with understanding and leading yourself. So knowing what you stand for how you want to be known. And this could be applied both at an individual team or organizational level. So it starts with that sense of purpose and identity. It's about standing for something and letting that understanding and insight 
guide and inform what you do and how you do it. It goes back to the piece around why. We talked about resilience and grit in the face of setbacks or uncertainty and ambiguity, the ability or willingness to push through rather than to stand, stand, stand still. We talked about creativity and, the, and, and innovation and the idea of continuously improving hacks, coming up with novel uh, uh, workarounds to, to challenges. Uh, and then we just talked about um, the importance of empathy, understanding yourself and understanding the world around you and where those two pieces meet is your sweet spot. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's that, that's, that's the summary right there. I think as we, you know, what it really is about today is just this change making in this, what we're calling the post COVID world, right? So what purposeful, that's important, not only value, and we talk a lot about value. I mean, that's, you know, a two week lecture right there, but uh, you know, what purposeful value can your ideas bring to this weird post COVID world? And how can you use, you know, that forward thinking attitude and that innovation to help the, your employers? We all work, right? Not all of us are just independent entrepreneurs, um, you know, to help those, those, those employers of yours regain, regain ta traction. And, and using that authentic empathy, right? To take the world from, it was in a pretty ugly place, all COVID has done is, is emphasize the problems that were there to begin with, right? I mean, didn't create those problems, it's just bringing them to light. We see that every day, right? So we, we can kind of really, that, that was the last piece. It's just a few minutes left if people do have some questions. I see a lot of typing, but just waiting yeah. for questions. questions and comments on anything we talked about. Obviously we can't get, unpack everything there is about entrepreneurialism yeah. in an hour, but to give you yeah. uh, a taster, uh, a, a sense, give you some things that you can actually riff off of and begin to contemplate and reflect on how this might uh, apply to you. And I'm hoping what you've taken away from it is a call to action. This is not, mm -hmm. the things that we're facing are not for somebody else to address. It's for each of us to address. Right. And it's for you to discover kind of your entrepreneur and find authentic ways of expressing your secret sauce in the world in your current place of employment, sorry your, your future <laughs> venture that you might want to create or some other opportunity that you see on the horizon that you want to take advantage of. So I see, see it. Yeah, and, 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 and a restart. Yep, You're a restarting yourself. Start up. Use the startup methodology to restart yourself. So, yeah, I know. I see lots of people talking. I just, I just read typing, something today saying that, again, the, the, the organizations that are mm -hmm. managing through this have cultivated a startup mindset. They're emphasizing action over research, testing over analysis. They're, they're, oh. it's, again, it's that strong, strong yeah. action orientation. Now is the time to take a step. Aaron, I, I love your question, Aaron. It's don't stop worrying about the oh. finance. We teach you. Yeah, right. So there is finance and then there's things you need to know for entrepreneurial finance that it's really, really, it's not, it's an obstacle you've set there. You don't have to be a finance person at all. Um, the, the thousands of people, you know, have, have taken courses in entrepreneurship, whether, you know, whether it's a course or not a course. The point is you find the people that can help you with that, Aaron. You, you understand basics and then you build the right team. You don't have to have all the skill sets. That's a Sarah Zvasky's crazy quilt principle is picking the right partners yep. that help you. Entrepreneurship cannot be done by yourself. You're not expected to be the CEO, meaning the chief everything officer. Can't that's do why it. to Mohammed's point says, hey, I don't have, a, have all these attributes. And that's the point is that no, nobody does. Nobody does. And you go back to that slide that's that we right. talked about. Who are you? Who do you know? What resources do you have at your, at, at your available? What are you seeing in the, in, the, in the environment around you using that empathetic orientation? And it's how that comes together, which is uniquely you and all within our, our grasp. That's the piece. Yeah. So, so the three attributes, they're, they're your three attributes. Nobody can give you those, Mohammed. That's a great exercise for Sorry. you. Go back to that, that column and, and, and find out, you know, put your I, own I would start with together. the question. Start yeah. with the question, how do you want to be known or what do you stand for? And see what that begins to reveal. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, your it's personal a great question. Point is your, <laughs> no your personal book. ecosystem is your attributes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I like that. Uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, before we break, we're just mm -hmm. at the top of the hour. Just wanted to also highlight a few things in terms of uh, if this is grabbed you in some way and you say, I want to dig deeper into this, uh, are the next intake of the BCOM program, the blended program starts um, the end of August. Uh, we also have a bachelor's of business administration and business of sustainability that uh, has a new intake in September. Uh, and then we have a whole host of graduate programs in the School of Business, everything from a doctorate down to graduate certificates that um, may be of interest to you. Uh, you might want to check some of those, uh, those pieces out. Um, and uh, we have two more uh, webinars that I'll be hosting uh, over the next uh, uh, two months. One is on design thinking. So design thinking is a, a close cousin to kind of entrepreneurial thinking and practice. Uh, I'll be joined by Tabea Berg, another associate faculty in the uh, BCom program. We're going to talk about how the principles and practices of design thinking can be leveraged for impact and how you can apply this individually as well as collectively inside of an organization. Excuse me. And then in July, I'll be hosting uh, the final webinar on the changing landscape of work. So how is work changing? There was already change and disruption happening in the world of work before COVID. It's now exacerbated and accelerated a number of changes that I think that we are starting to see uh, on the horizon. So we're going to explore, it's going to be an exploratory conversation around what does the future work look like and what does that mean for us as individuals, as organizations, and as a society. So thank you everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for uh, your input and your ideas. And I'm hoping that this was a good use of your last hour. And thank you, Rita. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, I turned my mic off because my phone was ringing. A great opportunity. Yes. Thank you for making me a part of, yeah. of your time. It's a precious gift. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.